Well, welcome to this service of morning prayer during Lent. Let's just take a moment of quietness as we come afresh into God's presence this morning. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love. According to your judgment, give us life. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn, and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit, and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Have mercy on me, O God, in your great goodness. According to the abundance of your compassion, blot out my offences. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my faults and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and righteous in your judgment. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me again the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your gracious spirit. Then shall I teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from my guilt, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Today's psalm is Psalm 42. As the deer longs for the water brooks, so longs my soul for you, O God. My soul is a thirst for God, even for the living God. When shall I come before the presence of God? My tears have been my bread day and night, while all day long they say to me, Where is now your God? Now when I think on these things, I pour out my soul, how I went with the multitude and led the procession to the house of God, with a voice of praise and thanksgiving among those who kept holy days. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? Why are you so disquieted within me? Put your trust in God, for I will yet give him thanks, who is the help of my countenance and my God. My soul is heavy within me, therefore I will remember you from the land of Jordan and from Hermon and the hill of Mizar. Deep calls to deep in the thunder of your waterfalls, all your breakers and waves have gone over me. The Lord will grant his loving kindness in the daytime. Through the night his song will be with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God my rock, why have you forgotten me? And why go I so heavily while the enemy oppresses me? As they crush my bones, my enemies mock me, while all day long they say to me, where is now your God? Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? Why are you so disquieted within me? O oh, put your trust in God, for I will yet give him thanks, who is the help of my countenance and my God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Full of compassion and mercy and love, is God the Most High, the Almighty. Lord Almighty and God of our ancestors, you who made heaven and earth in all their glory, all things tremble with awe at your presence before your great and mighty power. Immeasurable and unsearchable is your promised mercy, for you are God most high. You are full of compassion, long-suffering and very merciful, and you relent at human suffering. O God, according to your great goodness, you have promised forgiveness for repentance to those who have sinned against you. The sins I have committed against you are more in number than the sands of the sea. 
I am not worthy to look up at the heights of heaven because of the multitude of my iniquities. And now I bend the knee of my heart before you, imploring your kindness upon me. I have sinned, O God, I have sinned, and I acknowledge my transgressions. Unworthy as I am, you will save me according to your great mercy. For all the host of heaven sings your praise, and your glory is for ever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Full of compassion and mercy and love is God the Most High, the Almighty. So the first reading today is taken from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 2, beginning at verse 4. Hear the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. For thus says the Lord, What wrong did your ancestors find in me, that they went far from me, and went after worthless things, and became worthless themselves? They did not say, Where is the Lord who brought us up from the land of Egypt, who led us in the wilderness, in a land of deserts and pits, in a land of drought and deep darkness, in a land that no one passes through, where no one lives? I brought you into a plentiful land, to eat its fruit and its good things. But when you entered, you defiled my land, and you made my heritage an abomination. The priest did not say, Where is the Lord? Those who handle the law did not know me. The rulers transgressed against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal, and went after things that do not profit. Therefore, once more I accuse you, says the Lord. And I accuse your children's children. Cross to the coasts of Cyprus and look. Send to Kedar and examine with care, and see if there has ever been such a thing. Has a nation changed its gods, even though they are not gods? But my people have changed their glory for something that does not profit. Be appalled, O heavens, at this. Be shocked. Be utterly desolate, says the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the foundation of living water, and dug out cisterns for themselves, cracked cisterns that hold no water. So our second reading is taken from John's Gospel, chapter 7, beginning at verse 14. About the middle of the festival, Jesus went up into the temple and began to teach. The Jews were astonished at it, saying, How does this man have such learning? when he has never been taught. Then Jesus answered them, My teaching is not mine, but his who sent me. Anyone who resolves to do the will of God will know whether the teaching is from God or whether I am speaking on my own. Those who speak on their own seek their own glory, but the one who seeks the glory of him who sent him is true, and there is nothing false in him. Did not Moses give you the law? Yet none of you keeps the law. Why are you looking for an opportunity to kill me? The crowd answered, You have a demon who is trying to kill you. Jesus answered them, I performed one work, and all of you are astonished. Moses gave you circumcision, and you circumcise a man on the Sabbath. If a man receives circumcision on the Sabbath in order that the law of Moses may not be broken, are you angry with me because I healed a man's whole body on the Sabbath? Do not judge by appearances but judge with right judgment. Now some of the people of Jerusalem were saying, is not this the man whom they are trying to kill? And here he is speaking openly, but they say nothing to him. Can it be that the authorities really know that he is the Messiah? Yet we know where this man is from, but when Messiah comes, no one will know where he is from. Then Jesus cried out as he was teaching in the temple, you know me and you know where I am from. I have not come on my own, but the one who sent me is true, and you do not know him. I know him because I am from him, and he sent me. Then they tried to arrest him, but no one laid hands on him because his hour had not yet come. Yet many in the crowd believed in him and were saying, When the Messiah comes, will he do more signs than this man has done? The Pharisees heard the crowd muttering such things about him, the chief priests and the Pharisees sent temple police to arrest him. Jesus then said, I will be with you a little while longer, and then I am going to him who sent me. 
You will search for me, but you will not find me, and where I am, you cannot come. Then the Jews said to one another, Where does this man intend to go that we will not find him? Does he intend to go to the dispersion among the Greeks and teach them? What does he mean by saying, You will search for me, and you will not find me, and where I am going, you cannot come? On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the spirit, which believers in him were to receive, for as yet there was no spirit, because Jesus had not yet been glorified. And so we say the Benedictus together. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. In penitence and in faith, let us make our prayers to the Father, and ask for his mercy and his grace. For your holy people, that they may triumph over evil and grow in grace, we pray to you, O Lord. For the leaders of the nations, that you will guide them in the ways of mercy and truth, we pray to you, O Lord. For the needy, that they may not be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. We pray to you, O Lord. For the sick in body, mind and spirit, especially those who have coronavirus and those who care for them, that they may know your power to heal. We pray to you, O Lord. For the poor in spirit, that they may inherit the kingdom of heaven, and see you face to face. We pray to you, O Lord. Let us commend the world for which Christ suffered to the mercy and protection of God. And so the collect for today. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, and you forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in making us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Trusting in the compassion of God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. May God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.